it's a projection. It's a projection to move him over to right tackle. Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on, YouTube? Biggie546. Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into this. All right, so I'm trying to get back into it. I'm trying to get back into it. I wanted to talk about a couple of moves that we made. And first of all, I'm probably going to have to change these two guys over here. These two are probably gone. So I'm probably going to have to make some changes right there and uh, have a new background. Luckily, Blake Martinez decided to restructure and stay here. But it seems like the two safeties on this side are probably going to have to switch out eventually. But nonetheless, the Giants made a couple of moves. Also wanted to talk about a draft that came out, I think, today or yesterday, talking about the Giants selecting Charles Cross. So let's get straight into this. First, I'll talk about Matt Breida. Matt Breida got signed to the Giants, I think, two or three days ago. Two, I think two days ago. And my first reaction to that is I like the signing. I definitely like the signing. Matt Breida is someone who I don't know his, his actual 40 time, but he's a guy that can really leave people. He had like a 22 mile per hour run. You get him in the open field, touchdown. I mean, he's just that explosive. Now, he didn't get much opportunity on the Buffalo Bills. He got stuck behind the guys that they had there, which can be a, a you know, you could be looking at that as why couldn't he beat out the guys in Buffalo and he's going to be our backup running back? Well, we don't know where he'll be on that totem pole. But one thing that we do know is he's shown that he could be heavily involved in a running back rotation and do it successfully. Now, the guy is only 27 years old. He hasn't got a ton of carries in his career, so he shouldn't be, you know, washed up or, or on the downside of anything. And 2018, now I know 2018 and now is four years ago. So it has been a while. But I don't think he's lost anything athletically. I think he's just lost out on opportunities. So 2018, he went over 800 rushing yards. I think about 830, 820, somewhere around 840 maybe, and over 200 receiving yards. Now, that's a 1,000-yard season. And he was not featured as the full-time back. Yes, he got, I think, I think that time he might have gotten most of the carries, but he was not featured. San Francisco doesn't have a full-time you know, I'm going to give this guy 25 carries a game type of back. So I don't think he's that kind of a back, but also it shows that he was able to do that with not a full load of carries. Let's see if I can just pull this up just to just to show you all. On 153 carries, that puts you over 5.3 yards per carry. So it shows that he was making a lot of big plays, a lot of long runs, and that's how he got most of his yardage. So... Matt Breida, I think, is a great signing. People, Some people were thinking, like, does this mean that Saquon is gone? Matt Breida is a guy who's accomplished some things in his career, but he's not someone that you bring in and say, this guy's my starter going forward. There's nothing, you know, against that. So Matt Breida is probably going to be the replacement for Devontae Booker. A lot of times Devontae Booker outperformed Saquon last year, which was concerning. But a lot of times he did outperform Saquon. But a lot of times, too, he looked exactly like Saquon with his 28 and Saquon wearing 26. If you only saw the two, they have pretty much the exact same build. So a lot of times he looked just like them. And their running styles were different. But at the end of the day, I think they wanted a smaller change of pace speed guy. And that's what they got. So now if Saquon is back right and he's healthy, next year you're going to have Saquon who can hit a home run at any time. You're going to have Matt Breida who can hit a home run at any time. And I think that's kind of not like they, you know, made this move specifically with this in mind. I think once you lose a guy like Evan Ingram, who, yes, he had his he had his issues, but he's a guy that can score pretty much from anywhere on the field because of, because of the speed. Now you replace that speed and that, you know, big playability with Matt Breida. Uh, you got to think they'll probably, I think we signed that receiver, Robert Foster. He's another fast guy. So it looks like they're trying to build a very fast you know, explosive type of football team, explosive type of offense to compliment Daniel Jones because he likes to throw the ball down the field. And what's better than, you know, sending a running back out on a wheel route and having him catch the ball down the field. So Matt Breida, I think, is going to compliment Saquon. Even if Saquon gets traded, I don't think Matt Breida will be our only back. We'll probably draft somebody. We'll probably sign another guy. But 
I think that it's a very solid signing and that we probably got him for almost next to nothing. So that's not that's the thing going on with Matt Breida. Um, moving on, I saw something. I've been seeing this all over the place and Giants fans are split on this. I haven't gotten to make a video kind of breaking down his tape. I think Bobby over on Talking Giants has gotten to make a video, so definitely check him out. But I'll probably eventually get to making one. But for now, Charles Cross is getting mocked to the Giants. He's getting mocked to the Giants. There's rumors right now that the Giants really liked what they saw at Charles Cross's pro day. They probably liked what they saw at the combine. And Charles Cross is a very polarizing figure because he he plays left tackle. He's been a left tackle his whole pretty much his whole career. Never played right tackle, at least that I know of in college. Not much. It's a projection. It's a projection to move him over to right tackle. So people are worried and they're saying he's a left tackle. Why should we take him and stick him at right tackle? Also because people think that the guy can't run block because he's so good at pass blocking. That offense that he played in, they like to throw the ball. They throw the ball a ton. He doesn't have much practice uh, run blocking. So a lot of people are concerned about that. And a lot of people want their right tackles to be dominant run blockers. Right tackle, left tackle, both have to be pass blockers. First and foremost, both have to be pass blockers. This is not an issue. You should not be crying about your, your tackle being too good at pass blocking just because he's on the right side. I think the first priority for any offensive lineman in 2022, even going back to 2020, 2019, should be pass blocking. You throw the ball most of the time. Your, your games are won and lost with the quarterback. You are not going to run yourself to a Super Bowl anymore. It just doesn't happen. You also aren't going to pay you know a quarterback top three money and win a Super Bowl, but you also are not going to be able to run yourself to a Super Bowl. I have not seen that happen recently, and it just it just doesn't happen anymore. This is a passing league. The best quarterbacks win, and you need to protect your quarterback to give him a shot at throwing the ball and, and getting a bunch of yards. Daniel Jones has been under fire his entire career. He's been running for his life his entire career behind, you know, a horrible offensive line this entire time. So if they say that they want to empower Daniel Jones, it makes no sense to pass on a guy like Charles Cross when I think that he is well worth that pick as a pass blocker. Now, there's also another rumor saying, again, he can't run block. I have tape. I've seen tape of him run blocking very effectively. Now, is there a ton of tape of it? No, because they don't run the ball a ton. But I do think that he can run block at a functional level. Now, I'm not going to place him over Evan Neal. I'm not going to place him over Aquanu because those guys can pass block not as well as Charles Cross, but they can pass block at about 85% as good as Charles Cross. And they're dominant, mauling run blockers. And of course, you want that. You, you can give up a little bit of a pass blocker if you can have a dominant, you know, tone setter at, on, on your offensive line. So that's why he's not up there, but he definitely is worth that spot. Another guy I would consider, not at five, but maybe at seven, is Kenyon Green. Another guy who is a, he's a guy that, that you can kind of consider a mauler, and he's very adept at pass blocking, very balanced, very great with his hand placement. So, I wouldn't have any issue with the Giants taking Charles Cross at five or seven because he's a starting tackle. And do you know what starting tackles get paid in this league? Upwards of $20 million. You know, really good starting tackles. So I don't have any problem with that. Ryan Ramchick, you look at his his strength, his pass blocking. Jack Conklin, he's a guy. These guys can run block too, but their strengths, you don't have a right tackle out there that's only good at run blocking. You, you want him to be, of course, good at both. But if you could pick one, nine times out of 10, you're going to pick right tackle. If you want your quarterback to perform, you want him to perform at a high level and not have to deal with constant pressure coming off the edge, you get a right tackle that can block. Especially when you got a quarterback who sometimes has two blind sides. And I've seen this, you know, with other quarterbacks in the league where sometimes they're looking down the field and they don't see someone coming from the right side. So, that's my take on that. I have no issue at all with Charles Cross. Also, Andrew Thomas, Glowinski, both of them are very good run blockers. So if you want to run a power scheme, run behind your left tackle. I don't understand why teams never want to do that. Run behind your left tackle, run behind your left guard. It's the same thing. Just, just, just do it on the other side of the field because that's your better run blocker. But 
that's how I see that. That's how I see this whole Charles Cross situation. That's how I see the Matt Breida situation. You let me know what you think of the Matt Breida signing, of the Charles Cross signing. We also signed uh, Jihad Ward. I don't really see him as a big time signing. Maybe he proves me wrong, but I didn't really want to go into that because I don't, I don't see him making a huge impact. But those are my takes on that. Again, you let me know what you think, and hopefully, this is these are some of the foundational steps to the Giants finally getting out of this. You know what? If you count, you know what happens after you know 2011. What is this? A uh, almost 10 year funk we've been in so you guys let me know you made it this deep into the video come on just hit the subscribe button i make giants content primarily draft content secondarily and during the season i'm going to be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the nfl games and everything nfl so if you made this deep go ahead and join the d6 squad